Hello, this is Walter Fate, and I'm back to bring you another Friday installation of my Incel Post series. I hope you all had a good week. I certainly did, so let's jump into this. Looks like we're now at Incel Post 11. Now, last week I checked out Incel.life as a bit of change of pace from just using Incels.me. This week we're going to be taking a look at Reddit Brain Cells. This is the biggest refuge of incels on Reddit. They've apparently been cooperative enough that Reddit hasn't decided to ban them, despite what some people seem to want. I couldn't stop hearing about them this week because they have apparently appointed a female moderator who also posts on incel tiers, and some people are pretty pissed about it. This fact doesn't really affect me, but I might touch on the subject. The first post we're going to look at has to do with the military. I can kind of relate to this one, because I once joined the military as a 19-year-old virgin. But I'm not that young anymore, and things have changed a little since then. Let's see if I have anything to say about these complaints. I joined the military a while ago. I mainly joined to get a job, but also maybe I could meet some women. How wrong I was. I thought when I joined I could get in better shape, become a better and more interesting person, and then women would find me acceptable. The plain fact is that if you are a loser out of uniform, you will still be one in uniform. No matter where I go, I can't escape myself and how much of a failure I am. I can't outwork or outrun my genetics. I tried new hobbies like lifting, music, and hiking. I have a well-paying job with good benefits. All of this and still no female interest. It surely must be my personality, right? Not really. The 80-20 rule is much more drastic in the military. Since there are so many more males than females, females only will select the most manly of men, the biggest chads possible to date. This is for people in the service and the surrounding area in general, where the sex ratio is heavily imbalanced in the younger age cohort. Yeah, dating in the military never really seemed like that good of an idea to me in the first place. I'll touch on my own experiences in a bit here. It's so bad that the minimum for attracting a female partner has become six feet tall, square jaw, and white. Anything less than that and do not expect to go on a date for months at a time. These chads do not even have great personalities. Do they have a DUI, beat their wife? Do they come in for work late, sham at work constantly? They still get commended for their work and showered in female attention. And how females act is exaggerated as well. During basic combat training, the companies are mixed gender but live in separate sleeping areas. Male soldiers will sneak into the female bay and vice versa to use the women up a little before they get shipped out to AIT or their unit. Okay, so this is a bit of a departure from my own experience. I always felt I got equal recognition for my achievements compared to everyone else. Most importantly, we didn't actually have female soldiers. I was in a combat MOS. I believe women can be in combat jobs now, but this was 10 years ago or so. My basic training at Fort Sill didn't even have female soldiers. Our battery commander was a woman for some reason, and that was about it. It was probably weird for her being the only woman. I guess my own experience isn't even that applicable, but let me know in the comments, uh, military viewers, if this post has any truth to it. Women have an easier time passing their PT test. They have to do less exercise, and always get a pass on lifting heavy stuff while the males do it. They do less work while we are at our job, and no one seems to notice or care. I have some female NCOs, sergeants, and officers. I have to treat them with respect because it's my job, but honestly, I feel weird doing it. How can I call them sergeant, ma'am, and stand at parade rest for them? when other men have bent them over and used any hole they want. I'll update this sub on more stories as I think of them. I'm not sure if this applies to combat jobs or not, but there was actually a bit of a disparity in the PT test. Let's be real though, the PT test is fucking easy, even if you're a man in the youngest age bracket. It's probably better not to compare yourself to the women's test. I will note that the sit-up requirements were equal for women, but the push-ups and two-mile run were much easier. But the thing about not wanting to show women respect is standard incel stuff, basically. Sometimes these guys don't even want to talk to women because they can't get over their thoughts of them being fucked by chat all the time. Well, let's look at a few comments. Why fight for a country that doesn't guarantee you a wife, or happiness for that matter? If you want a country that guarantees you a wife, you might have to join one of the countries we're at war with. Gets me some money and out of my parents' house. I'm serving the country and women still aren't even interested in me. Okay, the whole post isn't really that bad compared to anything I covered last week. I can kind of feel for the guy. I wouldn't suggest looking for women in or around military bases in the first place. When you go back on leave and are home, it should be an interesting trait to be a soldier, but it's a lot less interesting to women that are surrounded by soldiers all day long. But I know these guys aren't generally looking for advice in the first place, even if I've been there. So we're going to move on to the next post now. 
what a woman means when she asks you for an open relationship. You aren't attractive to me anymore, and I need to cheat on you with another man to satisfy me. But I'm too much of a pussy to dump you, so I'll just tell you I want an open relationship. But through this, you will see less and less of me, because I will be busy with my friends with benefits while you jerk off at home. Because I know, as a man, you will have far more difficulties finding female friends with benefits than I do male friends with benefits. So in fact, through your agreement with an open relationship, I get to cheat on you without you ever getting to cheat back on me. This will allow me to scope around the market for a chad while keeping you around for financial and su emotional support. Then when I finally find a real chad, I can then dump you for good and move straight to my new relationship, without even being single for one day. Is this open relationship thing really that common? I mean, I've seen them before, obviously, but incels seem to think it's some type of epidemic or something. Women just losing interest, but still wanting to stay in a relationship. I don't, however, think I've ever seen that be the reason for an open relationship. Also, most guys don't have nearly as much trouble getting laid as this post would have you believe. I think saying most is fair. I don't have stats or anything, admittedly. Okay, so I mentioned the female moderator that's pissing everyone off, either just by being female or also posting on incel tiers. I'm aware that she got the position because the last mod was abusing his power. Um, board gaming appears to be this female mod. Let's see an example about how she's ruining this subreddit. Board gaming already started cursing our sub. A female mod on a fucking incel sub? Serious? She removed my post today for a dumb reason. Check out the sidebar rules. Links to other posts have to be NP or screenshot only with usernames blurred out. You can repost when you've done this. This sub is pretty much over. Countdown has started. Okay, so I think I have a grasp on this situation. One of the most important Reddit rules is to censor out the names and posts from other subreddits. I think it's to keep subreddits from going to war with each other or whatever the fuck you want to call it. It's the same rule Incel Tears has, and if that rule wasn't there, the subreddit would probably be removed. This guy posted a thread that wasn't censored and it was removed, and he was told he could post it again after fixing it. Oh man, those freaking Nazi mods. Remind me never to post here. Okay, so as you can see, Brain Cells isn't as bad as the other sites I go through. Uh, that being said, let's look at a few posts from the other sites before we wrap this up. This one comes to us from incels.me, complaining about Normie advice, I think. Just play the guitar, bro. LOL. Normies don't understand that you have to be naturally good. Sorry, but people are just naturally good at things. Also, people who have sang well and played instruments well have done it as early as 4 years old. Most people at 13. I've never had any talent, and I'm in my 20s now. There is no way I can naturally get good at playing an instrument to cope anyway. I'm just fucking shit at everything I do. Just LOL. I still remember 12 year old me being depressed as fuck because I didn't look like those boy bands back in middle school with girls obsessed over. Or depressed because I didn't know how to play basketball well like Zac Efron did in High School Musical or playing the guitar or the piano. All this when I was just young. Fucking LOL. Holy shit, I need to neck myself already. I literally have no talent. Huh. I feel like my area might not be typical, but almost everyone I know plays the guitar. It's actually weirder if somebody doesn't, I think. I started at 16, but I have no idea why you'd think 20s is too late. I've only met a few people with rhythm so bad that they legitimately struggled to learn. You just have to keep practicing. I almost feel like this has to be trolling, though. Playing guitar to get girls is not a bad idea, I promise. It works for a ton of people. Hey, uh, let's go check out incel.life. There haven't been enough horrible posts in this video. Rope for Sluts brings us a very thoughtful piece called Not All Premarital Sex is Degenerate. Yes, fornication is degenerate, and especially so when it is casual or with multiple people. If you engage in it, you deserve the rope. But... If you decide to rape a slut to put it in its place, that is not degenerate. A female who does not respect itself and does not save its virginity for its husband deserves to become a cum dump for the men in its city, and then stoned afterwards. This was practiced in virtually every culture in the world before cuckolds took over and fucked everything up, so it is in fact incredibly effective at keeping fem shits in their place and needs to be brought back. LOL, great save. Definitely. Taking what you are owed isn't degenerate. Yes, as degenerate as society is nowadays, I don't think many incels would want to go as far as getting married to have sex, especially with the cucked divorce laws giving FHOs all the power. Sure, in a perfect world, we'd have arranged marriage at 18 with our looks matches, 
Though I would settle for the end of hypergamy and legalized prostitution. Between those, incels would barely exist after that. Okay, one more post from Brain Cells. I feel it's important that all my female viewers hear about this, actually. Western women look like trash once past the age of 30. Holy fuck, I see all these disgusting bodies and faces from women past the age of 30, with disgusting clothes. Fat, ugly women neglecting their personal hygiene because they're married with an ugly cuck. Short hair, an ass like that of a hippopotamus, awful skin, dry hair due to smoking more than three packages of cigarettes a day. How is a man able to stick his dick in these 30 plus women? They look like ugly clowns. And then you know that they've been riding the cock carousel for years and years, having varicose veins, and an ugly deformed pussy filled with bacteria from all over the world because they like to travel. What a goddamn nightmare. What a nightmare. Oh god, what kind of world is this? Where's my rope? I'm actually going to be 31 on the 12th, by the way. I'm not sure if my looks are about to rapidly deteriorate or not. I'm not a woman, but I guess we'll see. I'd like to start getting on camera every once in a while, just haven't gotten to it yet. Anyway, I think that brings us about to the end of the 11th episode of Incel Posts. I'd like to thank everyone watching, everyone who has subscribed to me. If you haven't and want more content like this, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. I'd also like to thank my generous patrons. Chocobo Asylum, Lil Spoon, Clint Bainter, Dunkler Zebralord, Alatuna Dan, Jack Pacey, Tom Wilson, Ryan Quinn, Rissa Damore, Esperova, Regular Greg, and FSS. Thanks so much to all of you, everything helps me out a lot. There will be another video at least on Sunday, not sure what about. I do still have plans for a 3000 sub special if I make that number at some point, but no idea what it's going to be right now. Oh yeah, this is my Twitter, if you want to talk to me it's probably the best way. Link is in the description. On a separate note, if I ever promise something and don't deliver, well, I'm an alcoholic. You knew that when we entered this relationship, okay? I want to thank Brain Cells, Incells.me, Incel.life, Evan Williams, maybe even Abigail. Have a great night, everyone.